Today we're going to discuss a few of the differences between evaluating processes and evaluating outcomes and highlight the tools used to measure each. The video features a conversation between Rachel Jackson Gordon, an expert in participatory research and program evaluation at the Family Resiliency Center, and Jeannie Kramer, a trained speech pathologist who currently runs a student-facing initiative. That conversation uses a tool called a logic model, and we should define briefly the terms that Rachel and Jeannie discuss. A logic model includes inputs, outputs, and outcomes. In general, outputs refers to your program's processes, while outcomes refers to your program's effects. First, let's cover inputs. Inputs are all of the key ingredients that go into making programming happening. Then there are outputs. Outputs can be divided into activities and participation. Activities are the core program components that you implement every day, while participation is the engagement that you are expecting to see from everyone who engages with your activities or who is affected by your program. Finally, there are outcomes. Outcomes are the actual effects of your program on participants. Outcomes are categorized as short, intermediate, or long-term. For example, a change in knowledge is often a short-term outcome, while fundamental changes to participant behavior or to public policy are considered long-term. Okay, let's get to it. The conversation between Jeannie and Rachel begins with Jeannie noting that the difference between process versus outcome evaluation reminds her of her work as a speech pathologist. I look at this from the perspective of a speech pathologist where we write SMART goals. And so the things that you measure to make sure that the intervention is effective, the things that you measure to determine the health and well-being of the person and what then is success. So to me, an output would be the quality of the therapy session, the fact that they are referring to other people to come and see you, but then the outcome would be, did they meet that goal? Did you set a goal that they would be able to say the R sound in sentences or something like that, very simplified speech therapy goal? And an output would be the therapy activities that I'm doing and if it's keeping the child in engaged, if it's promoting continued participation. Am I explaining that yes. well? Yeah, I think you have a perfect understanding of it. So looking at quality, satisfaction, engagement are all great indicators for thinking about the outputs. And then moving towards those goals, those success categories, is when we start to look at outcome indicators. And so it sounds like your experience with speech language pathology gave you a really keen insight to what that looks like. So um, yeah, I don't know if you want to talk about this anymore in the context of INI. The Illinois Neurodiversity Initiative, or INI, is a program of supports for neurodivergent students at the University of Illinois that concentrates on academic success, social confidence, mental health, employment outcomes, and community support. From here, Rachel and Jeannie apply their discussion about outputs and outcomes to Jeannie's program. So if you want to talk a little bit about the outputs that you have going on here, and if, if these seemed accurate, since this is what I drafted based on my notes, and how we might look at reporting on those outputs, and then we can talk about how you might report on some of the outcomes and how those two compare. So do these outputs seem in line with what you all are used to doing? Yes, the one thing that I could see adding to outputs would be something about our employers. Okay. We are working with employers and they have goals to increase diversity in their workforce. And so I think that they have, they hold stake in some of the activities that we're providing in some of the interventions. So that's okay. probably the only thing that I see. 
that might be Are they engaging in some of the programming, like education on how the workplace should integrate people who are neurodiverse? They are. They are. So they come to the class that we have on employment and speak to our students on different topics, including job workforce preparation and then also how their corporation accommodates different types of people. Okay, that's really cool. And so there then I might put business partnerships in the inputs category. And then as a part of activities, we might put that underneath your employment class. And then we can have the participation saying the businesses are participating in the programming that you're putting together. Perfect. And, and then for outcomes, the short term might be that your students gained knowledge related to careers in the technology or what was the other field? Financial. Financial fields. Okay. So that's a very basic example, but we can talk a little bit more about the bigger picture as well and what you're hoping to see from students participating in the program. So what do you think is like the longest term goal for your students? The long term goal is graduation onto successful employment or graduate school. Okay, so this, this sort of captures that then. Mm -hmm. I wasn't totally sure if I got that right. Yep. So, we have those long-term outcomes being obtaining a fulfilling job or another type of role that they find meaning with mm -hmm. and graduating from college, or I can also add moving on to graduate school. And so those would be long-term outcomes. In comparison, you could say 100% of students were satisfied with the academic supports that they received as a part of the INI program. And so that would be an output indicator, whereas graduating from college would be an outcome indicator in that example. Does that make sense? It does. I have a question for you. Perfect. Another long-term goal of ours is to maintain mental health throughout. So there'll be ups and downs in mental health, but a large aim of ours is that our students do not experience a mental health crisis which is very, very common for these students. So I don't know where that would fit or if it would fit. You'd have to ask the student if they had any major mental health crises in that time period. And so those would be in that outcome category because okay. our hope would be that they have then, for an output indicator, that they have participated in X number of counseling sessions across the duration of the year one of INI program involvement. And then hopefully, because of that, you can look at outcome indicators related to psychological well being. Does that answer your question? It sure does. Super. Here are some takeaways for evaluation with regard to processes versus outcomes. First, there are key differences between process and outcome evaluation. Each serves its own purpose but both are valuable. Process evaluation comprises assessment of programming and outputs, what process is being done, how well the process is being done, and who is receiving the process and how well. Outcome evaluation comprises assessment of the program's effects on participants. And these are broken down into short, intermediate, and long-term. Finally, it is worth noting that the conversation between Rachel and G showed how a logic model is a roadmap that helps you see connections between program components, outputs, and outcomes. A logic model ensures that a program is linking resources with activities, participation, and outcomes. Stay tuned for a new microlearning that unpacks logic models in greater detail. Thanks for watching.